You are now tuned in to Go Time Dolphins with Charlie Touche and Kadeem Simmons, the Miami Dolphins podcast that's for the fans and by the fans. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. And it's your time. Going all out when it's go time. Go, go. I ain't wasting no time. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. Cause it's your time. Lay it on the line when it's go time. Don't waste no time. For those who don't know, I am a football journalist in the UK. I um cover the game, and I say football, soccer here in the UK. I cover the game at games. Speaking of game, I cover matches live at games inside stadiums or at home, depending on the job. In 2017, I was at a pre-season friendly between Tottenham Hotspur and Juventus and Tottenham won 2 0 And I asked the Juventus manager, Allegri, um whether there were any positives to take after the, after their defeat. And he looked at me like I just asked him the dumbest question in the whole entire world. And he said, We lost. There can't be no positives after a defeat. Like, what's there to be positive about? And a part of me has that feeling following the Miami Dolphins, Buffalo Bills, Saturday night football matchup in which the Bills won 32-29 with a walk-off field goal. Um, Yeah, it was... And, you know, we'll delve into it as we go along. And I know we, don't, I know we are quite short of time, so... I don't know how much World Cup talk we will get into, but um, yeah, Mr. Charlie Touche, how are you? And do you think there are can can you take positives out of a third defeat on the bounce for the Miami Dolphins? It's go time, Dolphins! The Miami Dolphins podcast that goes not only across the pond but across the world. I'm your boy Charlie Touche. I got my co-host Kadeem Simmons with me. It's always for the fans. And by the fans, your favorite podcast, favorite podcast. Uh, 100%, Kadeem. 100%. I don't like more victories, I don't like participation trophies. I'm not here for none of that. But if you are a Miami Dolphin fan, you had to watch that game and say, and said to yourself, we could beat these boys, and it doesn't matter where we play them. It doesn't matter the weather. It doesn't matter what, what the conditions are. We can beat these boys. That's what I took from the game. I think the consensus belief was we would get probably lose by seven to, or more. I think that's what, what the most, the majority thought. And uh, go ahead. Well, I had a 23-17 Buffalo win. You had a 20-17. Now, obviously, we're not the majority, but we kind of had a one-score game loss, mm-hmm. you know, in a kind of a low-scoring game and kind of both great wrong. Oh, got the one-score loss correct, but the low-scoring game incorrect, if that makes sense. Doesn't make my statement incorrect, though. Like, I still think the consensus thought we were going to lose by more than seven points. Or I, I think they probably thought we were going to get blown out. Miami team, cold weather game, da da da, all this good stuff. I'm going to be real with you. I don't trust Kansas City and I don't trust the Bills anymore. Meaning, I, I don't mind playing Kansas City at Kansas City. I don't mind it. Of course, I would rather have a home game in the playoffs. Of course, I'd rather have a one seed. Uh, and I said this probably five weeks ago, I'd rather play Kansas City over Buffalo. But this, the reason why I, I look at this game as positive, and I understand it's week 15 of the season, every team has injuries. Bro, every team has injuries, but not every team is missing six DBs, literally. You're not missing three. Everyone's not missing three of their starting DBs. You know what I'm saying? Your starting corner your starting safety in Brandon Jones, starting corner in Byron Jones, your, your nickel corner in Nick Needham, then all of their replacements are gone too, literally. We're, we're, we're really playing with 
ninth and tenth and eleven stringers, well not stringers, but DBs on the roster. So Keon Crossin, and this is this is nothing like an excuse. We lost. It is what it is. We lost. I'm not making any excuses. But Keon Crossin is a special teamer. That's his job. He, his job is to cover special teams. And he was covering Stefan Diggs, who for my dollar is a top five receiver in the league. Not only did, did Keon Crossin cover Stefan Diggs, Keon Crossin got hurt and he was injured covering Stefan Diggs. It's wild. So, no, this is not an excuse. Yes, we lost. But you said, are there any positive, positives to take? 100%. So I, I'll, I'll leave it there because I'm going I'm to shoot it back to you. But I got plenty to say, and we're not going to rush. I'm pretty sure. And plus, when we get to that World Cup talk, it'll be in bonus time. We'll have a whole bonus time of World Cup talk. Y'all see it. Yeah, it's, um, it's funny. So the game was a primetime game, not just in the States, but in the UK. It wasn't Saturday night football in the UK. It was Sunday morning football in the UK. Um, I stayed awake for a bit of it. Fell asleep, woke up, and the Dolphins were winning. And I was following the game on social media, you know, the ups and the downs and stuff like that. Um, I watched it back this morning. I watched it back before we recorded. Both times I'm watching it back. I'm watching it going, the Dolphins are going to win this, which is dumb because the game had been played. The Dolphins had lost. I knew the score. But I'm watching Mm -hmm. it going, we can win this. Like, be it momentum, be it the adjustments that Mike McDaniel made and then didn't make, then made again. It was just, yeah, like you said, a lot of people would have backed Miami to, back Miami and Tua to go to Buffalo in the snow and have another performance like Miami had back in the last two seasons to get Tennessee and get Buffalo and just, you know, it no work out. We like to mess around in this podcast. Not only did Tua show up, that touchdown to Tyreek Hill was just... Like, you, you can't put it anywhere else. Looks like money to me. 100%. And the reason I felt that Miami could could and would have won that game, even as I'm watching the replay, is that there's certain moments in the game in which I don't want to say Buffalo got the rubber the green because the Trent Sherfield and Jalen and Tyreek Hill drops in the end zone, that's not rubber the green, that's just Miami players not making catches they should be making. But there was a, a grounding call Oh, and non-grounding call on Josh Allen, which is 100% grounding. Hold on. I think it's not even the fact that it's grounding, Kadeem. I think because it hit an offensive lineman first, the offensive lineman can't be first to touch the ball. I think that's what the rule is. So not that it's grounding. And I could be, I could be wrong. I ain't going to lie to you. I could be wrong here, but I think I'm right. When the, when the, when, when the quarterback throws the ball, remember the Robert Hunt screen pass that he scored for it, upside down <laughs> Robert Hunt. The, the, the penalty was, yo, you can't throw it to your, your, your lineman. He can't be the first to touch the ball. And that pass hit the lineman first, right? And I know we're about to get into referees and all that, but I'm going to let you finish what you were saying. But I really want to go back to what I, what I – if there's any positives I could take away. But go ahead. Okay, okay. so, yeah, before we talk referees, positives. Um, It's funny how after the last game, me, myself, and DC Kai 305 were talking about – Christian Wilkins. I saw you shout him out talking about um Zach Sealer had himself another game. Jalen Phillip turned up and was training or practicing before the game with no top on, like he was in Miami, Florida, like he was, you know, hot. Jalen Phillips had himself another game, excellent force fu- excellent um force fumble. And there's stuff like that in which you kind of want Miami to put hold on, how how was it correctly said? Put the hammer and nail into the coffin, or hammer the nail of the head into the coffin. What was it again? <laughs> you see what I'm saying, dude? Like this is your quote now, bro. We didn't, but again, we... like it's, it's it's not my quote because I like I didn't make it, but I, I can't even think of it to get it so right. Do you want the actual quotes or do you want the mixed up one? I want the mixed up one. 
The mixed up one is we didn't put the head in the nail of the coffin. Yeah. You know, it's... Well, we didn't put the nail in the head of the coffin is the mixed up quote. Shout out to um, Jason Sanders. He looks like he's returning to form. But you get a... He's returning to even year forms. Yes. Yeah. But, yeah, the positives are once again, you essentially have the ball in your hands to win the game. And it's not a positive, it's a negative. We'll talk about referees after. You asked, who, game on the line, would you rather the Dolphins, was it behind with the offense with the ball or the yeah. Dolphins ahead? So my, my, and I asked this during the preseason. I asked this be in the offseason. And the question was, would you rather have the offense on the field down four with two minutes left? Or would you rather have the defense on the field up three with two minutes left? And listen, that two-point conversion by Buffalo, did he cross the line? Was it a conversion? They gave it. The Kader Kohu pass interference, which there's a photo of the flag being thrown before contact is even initiated. Maybe with some up with some better luck or maybe better play calling, Miami defense holds, Miami gets the win. But there were definitely positives to take going into the last three games of the season, which Miami can take and go, listen, we're not going to play a Josh Allen Buffalo for the next three weeks. We play like this, we clinch the playoffs, and we know into postseason. All right, let's let's do this. Every time the Dolphins lose a game, we don't have to blame it on a unit. And what I mean by that is, oh, the defense blew it. Oh, the offense blew it. Oh, the D-line let us down. The O-line let us down. The DB sucked. The receivers dropped the ball. Two ain't it. We don't have to put it on a unit whenever we lose a game. I just want to clarify that. We don't. Sometimes you're going to lose a game because the other team played better than you that day. Sometimes you are going to lose a game where the offensive line blew it. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you out wherever you 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 put you place responsibility wherever it needs to be placed. And something that that I I, I always try to be very clear with on Go Time Dolphins is that you can have you're allowed to have a bad game. You're allowed to coach a bad game. You're allowed to have a bad game if you're a quarterback. You're allowed to drop a couple passes. But you know, once it becomes a trend, then we have to address it, right? Like, yo, this is not a a, a one off. And this week, we got coach. I ain't going to lie. I think Coach McDaniel has to put us in better situations. And I'm going to tell you why, Kadeem. This is why. The whole team performed. We performed. We, it's cold weather game. Honestly, I dispelled it. Well, I don't want to say it. All right. I never thought Tua had issues playing in cold weather. Ever like yo, that was always one of the things. It was just one of the things everybody wanted to. Oh, he can't do this, he can't do that, he can't do this, he can't do that. I never thought that was a thing. Yes, he was 0-3 uh before cold weather games. He might have been 0-4 in cold weather games. Not sure. Could be 0-3, 0-4, something like that in cold weather games. And what they considered cold weather games, to be fair, is below 50 degrees. That's what they consider cold weather games. So before we get back to coach, I guess I'll, I'll touch on Tua and this cold weather game narrative. Don't maximize the severity of the weather and then minimize the difficulty of the throws after he completes them. After he completes them. You feel me? So either it's a cold weather game and it's 20 degrees out with a wind chill of, of, of 16 Near or, or 10, and he can't play in this weather, so y'all say. And then he performs, and now it's, oh, well, the throws weren't, quote, unquote, that difficult. Hold up. So can he play in it or not? Because that, that's what y'all say. He could play. He can't play in it. So he it, it's clear that he can play in it. You know what I'm saying? And I never thought it was an issue there. I always thought in those previous games, whether it was three or four games, because someone's going to say, well, how come he never won? And he's 0-4, or he's never won a game in cold weather. I'm going to say because he never had the A-team 
he hasn't made the playoffs yet because he had he didn't have the team around him. It was it always goes back to what team did he have, who was coaching him, like all of that. You know what I'm saying? So I it, all of that is is contributed to the same stuff. So I don't I don't subscribe to that. Tua can't play in cold weather because obviously he can. He performed. He showed up, made the throws. I think we could throw that out the window now. But there's some people who will tell you otherwise. But Coach McDaniel, bro, this is the third game in a row, Kadeem. In a row where Coach calling plays could have used a second opinion in the nicest way. Am I saying remove Coach McDaniel from calling plays? Absolutely not. Am I saying we need a new play caller or he, he shouldn't be OC, he should just focus on being a head coach? Absolutely not. But I am saying I'm concerned now. I am I'm actually concerned about, all right, look, bro, this whole game, we were able to run the ball. We had Raheem Beast Mo Stark coming into this game, bro. Like, had I known Jeff Wilson was all the way out of there, I would have said, all right, we need to start uh, Moster in, in, in no huddle because he's going to be the only running back really getting real tuck significant touches. But the man goes off, and Kadeem, we had so many situations where we needed to run the ball. We, we're, we're getting like nine yards of carry, Kadeem. Like, like not even – not even – it is it's literal nine yards of carry. That was the average. And here we go on first down from the goal line after a 60-yard run from Mostert. No gain. All right, cool. Let's run it again. We're on like the eight. Well, it's seven or eight. We throw the ball twice. The ball hits off of Tyreek Hill's hand on a perfectly placed pass. Tyreek drops it. It's okay. It's cold. Elements, people playing defense. Still a drop. But you didn't catch it. Cool. Third down, we throw it to Trent Sherfield on the goal line. Throw it low. You don't want to bang, bang play at the goal line. You, you protect your receiver. Throw it low. Only where he can catch it. Ball hits him in the chest. And Sherfield drops it. It's cool. Fourth and goal, we kick it. Now, I want to be very fair. I wanted to run that ball on second down right there. Because we've been running so well that it's up to that point. Like, yo. Run this thing in. And to give you some, some foreshadowing, Savan Ahmed gets the same opportunity from the 12, one touch, and scores a touchdown. You see what I'm saying? So I'm like, yo, if we would have ran that ball, not saying who knows what would have happened, but I would have preferred to run that ball, made it an easier third down conversion. Either you score on that second down, or, or it's an easier third down instead of two opportunities that were drop passes. All right? So two Coach McDaniels, defense he still called the right plays but his his players let him down in those situations you still gotta run the ball though bro because i disagree all right cool I, i'll let you, i'll let you get the floor so now now you get uh first down short field you you back buffalo up they punt it to us it's first down on the 50 and we don't get no yards because we didn't we didn't run the ball once all, all passes. How do you go from gaining over 150 yards rushing and then have a streak in the game where you're kind of you're either you're down four or you're up seven or 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 eight and then you throw the ball five times without running the ball? How do you do that? You threw the ball five times and you're in in your striking distance and you're not running the ball. That that can never happen. It can't. But the reason I said I disagree, because you said it yourself, he drew the right plays mm -hmm. and his players let him down. So it's not like he drew plays which didn't work and it's like that was never even going to work. It's a situation where he drew up the plays, two were put the ball only where his guys can get it, especially on that pass to Sherfield, and it's a drop. And McDaniel is probably going, well, what, what, what more can I do? Two was going, what more can I do? The, the second situation you said, I, I I agree. But that not running the ball in those situations, it's not a Seattle Seahawks, um, New England situation where you have to run it, you throw it, and there's an inception. It's like, oh, my days. I understand that running it and feeding the hot hand does make sense. 
but McDaniel called the correct plays and he was let down by his players. It's the same situation where the a couple of well now, now months ago is about the, the fourth down where he draws up the correct play, mm-hmm. the line blocked the in, in, intended way, and was it Chase Edmonds ran the wrong the wrong hole, and then he's going, Well, what more can I do? Because everyone else done the correct thing and the final execution is incorrect. That's not a McDaniel, in my opinion. I, I'm glad you said what more can I do? Because as a coach, you're supposed to put your team and your players in the best situation to win, in the best position to win. So a- I didn't hold on. I didn't say I didn't say I didn't say uh it was a bad call. He made good calls and they let him down, is what I said. Yo, he still made good calls, they dropped the ball, they let him down. But you have to make the best call, better calls. So the better thing to do was to run the ball because you had the hot hand. Oh yeah, it's safer. You run the ball, you're in striking distance. So hold on, okay, like, hold okay. on, hold on. So you you drop the ball, they drop the ball, but you didn't put your team in the best position to win. You just put them in a good enough situ- position to win, and they drop the ball on you. So just like you said on that fourth down, the that's a little bit further out. I can't I can't remember everything in the in the situation. But it's the best situation to win, not a good enough situation to win. Put your team in the best situation to win. So, yeah, he, they dropped the ball, but I still feel like, yo, we're, you can run the ball. How do you ever get to a situation where it's you're on the 50-yard line and you have to punt the ball back because you didn't run the ball? Okay, but that's – if we stick to the goal line scenarios, yeah? Okay. The best situation, yeah? Genuinely, Hold on, what's the better situation? It, you got a long sleeve on right now? Yeah, did you cut those slits in the thumbs? By, by no, it's, no, it's how it is. They came like that. Yeah, Mo, so most Nike long sleeve tops now come with holes at the thumb. For real? Yeah, I've got I've, I've got loads. All that come like that. Is this a UK thing? Nope. I got I I, I got this from UK fanatics, but yeah, literally it's. I've got stuff from US Fanatics and it comes from... Well, I have I'm, I have a gang of long sleeves from, from, from wherever. Dolphin long sleeves. And they have no slits in the thumbs. But it, it's cool. I'm yeah. just saying. Um, Let's go. But yeah. And again, this is not a knock of Raheem Mostert. What's a better situation than Tua to Tyreek Hill? A better situation is a touchdown. Okay, and whose fault is it that it wasn't a touchdown? I, I said that. I said that the receiver let him down. I already said but then, that. But that's the point I'm making. It's again, it's not. It's not like Mike McDaniel called, called a. Oh my day! Did you really call that play? I didn't say it was a bad call. I I said that a couple of times. Now. I didn't no, no, say no, it was no, a bad no, call. Okay, but okay, it, it, sorry, sorry, the, the, the more point I'm making is, is it only the perfect call? If it ends in a touchdown, if it's a dropped pass and it's an open no, it, no. To answer your question, the answer is no. To what you said, is it only yeah. the perfect call if if it's successful? And the answer is no. But if you look at the play and there's traffic in front of Tyreek Hill, this is not the easiest catch to make. He does have to go over someone. It is the, we're, we're in the conditions of a, a, a nine degree wind chill. You do got to go up, hits him in the hands, he drops it. I'm like. You could have drew up a better play than that. For example, I think the uh, Trent Sheffield play was a better play than the Tyreek Hill play. He's open. You you put it where and I think everyone remembers or everyone should remember when we were playing. <laughs> I can't even remember who we were playing. Now, so maybe <laughs> everyone should remember. So I, it could have been. It could have been. So it wasn't Cincinnati because Edmonds had a drop in Cincinnati. But it was. It was either Buffalo, the first game against Buffalo, or Baltimore. And Chase Edmonds did an angle route where he, eh, eh, and Tua hits him on the hands. Chase Edmonds had to go up for the ball, and he gets clapped on the one-yard line. He gets it's, smacked hard, and he and it's an incomplete pass. Is that the Bengals? I want to say it was in something against Orange. I, 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 thought, I thought it could have been the Bengals, but I know he had a different drop. But I know the reason why it wasn't the Bengals because he came back, he scored a touchdown he, on, on a handoff. Okay. So I don't think it was the Bengals. So anyway, what, what I'm saying is 
that's a high that's a high traffic situation to throw the ball between the hashes. Ask Seattle about that. But you want to protect your your receiver, throw the ball low so he doesn't get hit with a bang bang. And I thought Chase Edmonds was out, but he didn't. If he would have caught the ball, he could have protected himself. But again, you got to put that ball in a better place. So now here goes Tua making the, the right adjustment, throws it low where only his receiver can get it. And there's a still shot, bro, where there's the linebacker is right in front of Trent Sherfield. If Trent Sherfield is standing up and makes this catch, he's it's gonna be clap town. He's getting smacked. So Tua throws it down, he goes down for it, hits him in the chest, ball comes out. I think that play is better than the Tyreek Hill play. So again, to answer your question, no, not just because it's perfect, but it's safer. So this play, the Trent Sheriff play was safer of a call than the Tyreek Hill play was because that could have been a pick, honestly. Uh, but there's just too much things going on. So Trent Sheriff play is safer. And I, uh, and I just believe that there are safer running plays that you could have called to get us in the box or a better situation where you're on the two yard line. Now you, you could have had a positive gain of four or five, just like Savan Ahmed ran it in from the 12. And not only that, Kadeem, it was the end of the first quarter. So we just had a whole rest. We done got our, our Gatorade filled up. We had a water break, TV break, commercial break. It's second down, and he threw the ball. Like, that's a handoff waiting to happen. I'm like, oh, this is 1 million percent handoff. And we didn't hand it off. We threw it twice. So I think you, you think can put your team, your, your team in the best situation and i don't think he put his team in the best situation on on, on those two plays we can go back and forth because I, I, I still think if it's opinion Hill, for sure yeah, it's, it's just an yeah. opinion do you also think that one because everyone's probably thinking oh they're gonna run it he went left whenever i expect him to go right it don't matter the run was working for me it doesn't matter the run was working every time we ran the ball it was working yo we got in the red zone three times and at this time, it was still, this is one of our first three red zone possessions. So we got into the red zone three times, got two field goals and a touchdown. Bank, the, the Bills got into the red zone three times, got three touchdowns. This is not good. Then we're going to get to Josh Boyer. I got something for you, Holmes. But then when the everyone thought this was going to be the quote unquote snow game, we get to the game, Kadeem, and it's green pastures everywhere. I'm like, oh, my locks are going to hit today. Shout out to Charlie Touche and his last-minute locks. If you didn't catch his last-minute did locks. Did you just call yourself in the, in the third person? Shout, shout out to hey, Charlie Touche. Shout, shout, out, shout out, out to out. myself. Say shout, shout out to no, listen, myself. I'm just saying because people need, people need to know. So shout out to Charlie Touche. He said there was a, a last-minute locks on, on YouTube at Go Time Dolphins, where he gives you like the, the picks of the week, like the last minute picks of the week, if you're if you're into DraftKings and stuff like that. So this man said Tyreek Hill was gonna go over six and a half uh, receptions. Ping, cha ching, check cashed out. This man also said Josh Allen was gonna go over 47 and a half rushing yards, cashed out. And this man also said that the Dolphins were gonna score over a touchdown and a half in the game as a team. And it's crazy that the disrespect of that prop bet was even a prop but anyway that being said Kadeem everyone thought this was going to be the quote unquote snow game bro the game comes on and three and a half quarters of football we did had we did we we had hardly any snow hardly any snow the snow starts coming down Kadeem and you know what coach McDaniel does hey let's throw it I got something to prove my dog could throw in in the snow first pass of the real heavy snow, it's a pass to uh, Tyreek Hill. I'm like, bro, why wouldn't you throw? Why wouldn't you like? Yeah, you know, all right. I can't say what down that was, but I'm saying I thought we should have had more opportunities to run that ball in that situation. And I'm just saying, like, this is on coach. And the past couple games, coach has not made the adjustments. And this is not blame. This is not like, oh, he's he's messing us up and he lost the last three games. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is. When we say the O-line has to be better, it's because the O-line gave up 11 pressures a game. When we say Tua has to be better, it's because he picked the San Fran game and the Chargers game to have his worst two games of his career, which is allowed, and he's still my dog. Like, believe it. But it's time to say, all right, Coach, got to be better, bro. Like, yo, you wet the bed, Coach, the past couple games. And we got we need better plays. Uh, better – we need – we need – 
to be cognizant of what's going on in the game, bro. Because I feel like he's really playing Madden. And sometimes, I ain't going to lie, Kadeem, like that Waddle touchdown, I like, this is why I like Coach. Because he's not afraid. There is no spirit of timidity in Coach McDaniel. I can assure you of that, and I appreciate that. But we need to put it in, a, in, in like, we need to understand, like, compromise. We, we need it. We need, like, a, a healthy a healthy threshold here. That right there is Coach McDaniel because he knew he was going to talk about the running and the passing in the second half and once the snow came and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, Mike McDaniel said after the game, when asked about why the Dolphins passed the ball more in the second half compared to running, despite the fact that he might have having himself a game, and I think it was something like 15 passes to 10 runs. But even so, probably should have been more running than passing. So, Mike McDaniel said, I mean, you have to, in a game like that, you have to kind of stay ahead of what the defence is doing. I think when they adjust, we have to give them a reason to play single safety. I think they played four snaps of man the first time we played them. So you have a choice. You can either play scared or you can try to, you know, continue doing what your offence is brought to do. And if they're blitzing, five-man pressure to stop the run, it's going to get ugly. I was fine with the way the game went. And I think all of our players would, if given the opportunity, the offensive line and the running backs believe in our receivers and quarterback. And you have to play to each other and take what the defense is giving you. What I will say before I, I let you come back in, I agree. There are certain situations where I don't even think it's about, you know, trying to get the defense out of a certain situation or anything like that. Earlier on in the game, and earlier, earlier when I said in this podcast, I said McDaniels adjusted from previous weeks, they went back, went back to not adjusting and they kind of went back to adjusting. I thought the first half play called in terms of runs, you know, like short on, um, you know, third and short, Alec King gold, fullback dive, brilliant, perfect. But there was a play, I think it was like third and two late on and I'm thinking, please just run the ball, please run the ball. And he tried to go to Jalen Waddle on like an out route. And I think it was Tyreek Hill on. Uh, oh, oh, my bad. Go ahead, continue. Go yeah, it, 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 it was Jalen Waddle. It didn't work, and I, it's, it's just like. And I think my issue with the play calling, and it's one of those things where, and I'm kind of going all over the place, but you can see when it works. You're just like, this wise defensive genius. But that happened twice, could you? No, 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 no. Let me finish. But it's also like, the offensive genius stuff needs to be dialed back. A tiny bit because there are genuine certain situations where play the percentages and do just one, please just one. And yeah, there was I think I while I, while I disagree with you on running in the red zone in, that, in those situations, there were times you know in the round midfield where it's like please please just one, please trust Raheem Moster, Ali King Gold to you know gain one or two yards, even if it's with second, you know, second push from the offensive line. But I can also understand wanting to put the ball into his hand and believe in with Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill, they can get... Yeah, you, you, you want to put the ball in, in your best player's hands. So, or keep the ball in your best player's hands. So, to, to, to Tyreek, I understand that combination. But Kadeem, there's two third and shorts. One was a third and one where we, we threw the out route to... I thought it was Tyreek Hill and it almost got picked. Um, and I'm like, yo, that was a perfect place to run the ball. Third and one, we've been winning. Like your O-line has been winning. You know what I'm saying? And then there was another one where it didn't go to Tyreek. It was like a, a, a that could have been Waddle. And Tyreek Hill was streaking uh, on a slant. But Tyreek Hill wasn't the, the main read. It was the one read. And by that time, by the time you look at Tyree, he was already in the back of the end zone. Had he been the, the only read of the play on a third and one or two, of course, Tua would have found him. So I knew someone was going to screenshot Tua not seeing Tyree streaking across the, the field wide open. But you got to go through the pro progressions of the play. You know what I'm saying? So <sighs> very, very quickly. So is the solution in these situations, and it sounds very simplistic as the UK Miami Dolphins podcaster sitting at home, why not just run an RPO? 
because Tuba's brilliant at RPOs. And you just say, listen, if if it's there, keep the ball in the running back's hand first down. If it's not there, try and get a quick pass to. And this is where you can probably get more of Mike Isiki involved. Mike Isiki, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle. Or are you just thinking under centre, you know, um, run, run, run and just, you know, play boring NFL football? So r- RPOs are cool, but they're not your go-to. Like you can win with RPOs. When I say win, I'm not talking about win games. I'm talking about win plays with RPO, like a situation with an RPO. But if you have a Tyreek Hill or a Jalen Waddle with a quarterback like Tua, you should have guaranteed plays. Like this is a this is a lot. This is the your two point conversion plays. Like you should have multiple two point conversion plays. Like if you need one play to win the game and it's two yards, you should have a handful of those plays. So none of those will be RPOs. You see what I'm saying? It'll be, I know it's a man beater over here or it's a zone beater over there. You, you know that off the top. So I understand what you're saying. It doesn't necessarily work like that. We're going to uh, we're gonna keep moving a little bit more. So for the life of me, Kadeem, for the life of me, I like to give people benefit of the doubt in everything I do, in all aspects of life. All, like This is me as a human, as a person. I'm very forgiving. You know what I'm saying? And I give people benefit of the doubt all the time. And I just want to give Josh Boy benefit of the doubt, Kadeem. I want to say, I want to say, yo, before I go there, shout out the friend of the podcast, Javon Holland, Snowman. Uh, he injured his neck, and you know, we just hope like he was good. And next thing you know, he came, he ended up coming back in the same game. So we still hope he's good. Um, we appreciate him him uh, coming back and, and thugging, it, thugging it out. But if it's a neck injury, you know what I'm saying? So we hope the best for the neck injury. They all came back with a cowboy collar still making plays. It's crazy. Uh, but Josh Boyer, is it, Kadeem, that he doesn't have his all-pro corner, Byron Jones? He doesn't have his stud safety, Brandon Jones, friend of the podcast. He doesn't have Nick Needham. He doesn't have Emmanuel Ogba. Is that the thing? Or is it he's not a good defensive coordinator like we thought he was? Which one is it, bro? Is it worrying that 15 weeks is into the season? I genuinely don't know. Yes, it's again, worrying, Kadeem. Because, because, because again, that's what we did with Tannehill for seven years. Because but and and again, like I'm I'm watching the game and I'm going that like that touchdown just before half. Is that's, a, that's exactly where I was going. Like, go ahead. Like, I'm, I'm watching it going. You've got Josh Allen to scramble for his life, Bradley Chubb chasing him down, and he thrown the ball into the back of the end zone. And at that point, there's a part of me which went, defense done everything they could until they couldn't. And when plays develop for that long, you're asking a lot for your defenders to cover for that long. I'm also there going. Big man, make a stop. Like, like this is this is perfect where you go. The the Bills have no more timeouts. If we get a stop, perfect. Same way I said earlier on, that two point conversion is Josh Allen. I guess doing Josh Allen things. And on another day, they don't get a two point conversion, and the Dolphins might maybe go on to win. So I'm looking at the game going. Is it as egregious as that third, as the um the play against um what's his face Herbert and and, and that third down? I don't think it is. No, no, but, no, no, no. But when you add Bradley Chubb to this defense, and in no way a knock to Bradley Chubb, but the rest of the defensive line are essentially outplaying Bradley Chubb. Does someone else come in and even with the Clayton Fedlums getting significant snaps, Noah Igbenogany, um, Clayton Fedulum, Ron McKinley played significant snaps, Keon Crossan, do That's other problem, guys? Though. That's a problem, Kadeem. Look at look at the names you just named, bro. Like... But no, so, but, so, but the point I'm gonna make is 
the same way when we lose to, I guess, the 49ers, and we can't even name a single 49er DB. Same way, you know, the Texans' defence for the second half just stops Miami. Would a... I see Vic Fangio's name get banned about on social media. Would a Vic Fangio come in and go, we're going to do this, and we are just going to thrive, even with no names? Or... And the problem is, is that does is Josh Boyer kind of does he get a mulligan because he's down at, at one point in yesterday's game, he's down friend of the podcast Brandon Jones, friend of the mm-hmm. podcast um Javon Holland, Byron Jones, mm-hmm. um Nick Needham. Mm-hmm. I think Jerome Baker went out injured. Rather okay. we think of Jerome Baker, he he still went out injured. Yep. You've lost um Emmanuel Ogba. Yep. Like you're, you're there just going, you are that look. You're down uh, to the McKen- McKenzie Alexander. Yeah, you are down to the. I think we lost up. another DB somewhere in there. Keon Crossing went out that same game. Yeah, Kader Cole, who was limping around in Kader the game, Cole playing with, with a bandaged hand as well. Like, Bruh. it's 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 at the point where yeah, friend the podcast Javon Holland has to come back with a neck brace because the Dolphins are like, we have we have no one else. Guys are limping on the field because the alternatives is it's me and you back there. Now listen, you you know as a DB I can backpedal. You, like you know I can be, I can do a little. Like, do you know I'm like, hey, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm off, I'm off to um to do it. I had a feeling now, so listen. Where is it? Nah. Anything that's it, that comes my way, I got it. I'll be swatting, I'll be swatting passes yes. get out of it. I can swat passes like the I'll best of them. Y'all see what I got to put up with on this podcast with this guy. But, you know, I'm just saying. Just Listen, for the past three weeks, the Miami Dolphins, and I don't, I can't even go back to the Texans game because I don't even remember off the top of my head, but now I'm curious. Did we give up a touchdown before halftime of the Texans game and the Texans get the ball back? I don't know if we no, did or not. We did it, but. Right. But I know we did against San Fran. I know we did against the Chargers. And I know we did against Buffalo. That is not a recipe for victory, Kadeem. You cannot let a team double dip in the NFL and think you're going to be okay, bro. Like, so there's, there's a rule of thumb. Very, 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 very quickly. What I love about Josh Boyer is in this bizarre way. You said you can't let a team double dip. In the, in the NFL, yeah, Buffalo come out and don't score, don't score a single point in the third quarter. It's not, a, it's it's an opportunity to double down. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you still I mean, scored before the half, bro, okay, okay. and it's you got pretty, the ball back. I, I I get that, but in this situation, they didn't double dip because of boy. Nah, bro, nah, no, bro. no, no, no. You, no, all right, no. look, look. I'm, you I'm, cannot I'm, let I'm, a team I'm, score. I'm being pedantic. I'm being pedantic. You said this is opportunity to to double dip. Cool. They got an opportunity and they didn't because if anything, got I won't even. I wouldn't even say opportunity. How about that? You cannot let a team score before halftime with no time on the clock. I totally agree. I don't even care if we get the ball next. Like, you let you let the team score before halftime and get the ball back in those three situations. So it's it's worse that they got the ball back. But even if we got the ball back, you cannot concede that those points. So now Josh Allen, bro, the the glitch monster that he is, bro. That someone on Go Time Dolphin said, if it's a one score game, close game, Josh Allen will glitch for you. He's gonna give you one, bro. And did he? Shout out to Jason Keck, you know, one of our favorite uh, listeners on this podcast. Jalen Phillips is showing up for Jason Keck because Jalen Phillips probably listens listens to GTD. Listen, Josh Allen has no time on the clock. Eight seconds left in the half. You gotta get rid of this ball. Or you're only going in up halftime at one point. That's accurate, right? It was one point. Yeah. They're only up one. And you want these, you want this field goal, Josh. So you want to get rid of the ball early. Don't hold on to the ball too long. Don't take a sack. What does Josh Allen do? This man looks, takes like three whole reads, then rolls out, then flips the burgers, then put the cheese on the top of them, let them simmer. And I'm like, yo, I had a smile on my face. Kadeem, I'm like, 
That's my dog. That's the Josh Allen I know right there. Use all the time, Josh. Do that, bro. I appreciate you. And then get it like batted down or something. This man zipped it in there, and we gave up a touchdown, bro. I, I was so upset, Kadeem. Is that, I was so mad, bro. But is that just not, and I hate to say it, but like one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL is doing something only one. I get that. I get and, that. And, and I think that's why I'm harsh in that situation to criticize Josh Boyer fully. No, 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 Kadeem. I'm okay if it was just this week. I'm okay. But you can't but, but let. Again, it's, oh, no, 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 because, no, 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 no. Because you said you said the best quarterback. You said, oh, you got to, it's Josh Allen. Bro, I'm okay if it's just this week. But it can't be last week with Justin Herbert and the, the week before that with, with Brock Purdy. You can't the, do it all the time. The point I'm making is, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at them as, while as a collective, it cannot happen. Okay. This one, compared right. to the manner in which he done it against the Chargers, to me, are two separate situations. No. Because it's a, it's a if, 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 if you let me finish, if you let me finish. No, but again, it's, he didn't give, he, he gave the Chargers seven points, 100%. In okay. my opinion, he didn't give Buffalo seven points. He, if anything, called up a play to stop Josh Allen from scoring and then Josh Allen done Josh Allen things if that makes sense and that's no, why again no, that's, no, that's why no no I, I disagree bro because you 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 had you still have the San Fran game where he ran two man under on the two yard line okay but then that okay but it's dumb situation dumb situation Josh Allen doing Josh Allen things I'm I'm just saying on the first situation I am not as angry I, I'm not gonna sit here and go you messed up because you got outdone by Josh Allen. Well, look, how about this? If you don't give up a third and 17 in the same game with Josh Allen, I might be able to let you live, Kadeem. But what you know what this is? Was it was third and 17. We had uh we backed him up and it was third and 17. Bills get Bills converted a third and 17. That's unacceptable. I can't tell you where in the game. I wrote it down for the podcast. I can't tell you where I could find it on the next episode and say this was the third and 17 that the Dolphins gave up and the Bills converted with. So if you don't convert, if you don't let them convert third and 17s, I could be a little more lenient with, with stuff like this. But Kadeem, when you say it happened three times in a row, but this time it's against Josh Allen or Aaron Rodgers or someone else, it's like, all right, it's unfortunate. But you know what this is called, Kadeem? It's called guilty by association. It is associated with Josh Boyer's defense conceding points with no time on the clock in the first half and then giving it back to a team who gets the ball back first in the first half. And then It's guilty by association. Up, but then don't, then don't just go to the guys playing with nobodies and... Right. That's 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 so, why I led so, with so, the so, question. So, so, but, but, I led with the question. Is it is it Josh Boyer or is it the, uh, is it he doesn't have any pieces to work with? Um, and what's the answer? If I had to answer it today, I believe it's Josh Boyer. And, and, I, and I, yeah. And, and, um, and, and I understand that's unfair, but I, if I had to, I'm like, I think it's Josh Boyer. Yeah, I just it's, think it's Josh Boyer. It's, it's one of those situations where, listen, if Josh Boyer does lose his job, you know, in that conversation, he probably will go, you saw what I did with all my pieces. You saw what this defense looks like when you're missing three cornerstones in that backfield. Do I not deserve a second chance? And... I'm sure Stephen Ross will go in an ideal world, yes, but unfortunately, no. And the bigger issue is if Josh Boyer does get replaced, whoever replaces him is going to have to via the draft and Chris and you know your boy Chris Greer and Mike McDaniel in no in no offense rebuild this secondary because again. I'm seeing X, David Howard just get cooked all game. And does it go back to what friend of the podcast, William Hayes said? The guy just playing with zero confidence and he's got no one opposite him to kind of shut things down. And it's just a situation where he's defeated before the opposing quarterback has even attacked the ball. He's like, you know what? I'm probably going to get cooked. We go again next next half, I guess. We got we got to keep it fair. You know, we got friends of the podcast. Shout out to Robert Hunt. He jumped a couple times. 
got us behind the sticks. Uh, first and fifteen, third and ten, I think. I right, we got we gotta we gotta address you know friends of the podcast too, just to keep it fair. 100%. Um, uh, let me ask you something, Kadeem. So, are you concerned about Tua being a, a cold weather quarterback or not? No, and it's, it's funny. It might it might be Nick Hicks from Perform. It might be Ricky Watson. It might, it might be someone else. He basically like. Before I make the point, you've worked in Alabama. How mm. cold is it there? Alabama is not Iowa cold. It's not, and I know you probably don't know some of these cities I'm about to name, but Alabama is not Iowa cold. It's not Buffalo cold. It's not Boston cold. Alabama is cold enough to where you can say you played in cold before. For a matter of fact, I'll just say it like this. Since everyone else paints the narrative, I'll use their example. To them, a cold weather game is below 50. Alabama gets below 50. Easily. And just for those who aren't aware, where does Tua spend his college years? Alabama. And did he not, prior to his near career ending hip injury, Mm -hmm. was he not essentially the Best quarterback in the nation and number one overall pick. He was. So this whole two I can't play in cold weather. It's like you just didn't see the kid play in Alabama. Because- it's just it's just like every other foolish conversation they try to have. And honestly, are you, you are we about to go into the bonus time, Kadeem? Well, not b- before we did. I do want to give a shout out to um. I would just mentioned his name, but Nick Hicks um perform, who is essentially Tua's off season trainer, um. Tua has this thing which, don't get me wrong, I see other quarterbacks do it on a weekly basis. Um, Dak Prescott done it this week today against the Jags. Um, where, he, where for Dak Prescott, he spun to his left and threw a touchdown to Noah Brown. Tua does his thing. He done it against the Ravens. I want to say. Yeah, it was a Ravens where he spun to his left, which two is a lefty. So spin to his left is easy for him. Today, or today, against Buffalo, he spun to his right. And if I'm remembering correctly, he spun to his right, started running, and gave someone the two a hezzy. Now, if you haven't seen the two a hezzy, <laughs> that's when he kind of runs like a little, ah. Oh. It's a Euro step. It is beautiful. Unfortunately, to a slipped. I didn't yeah. get the first down. Yeah. But um, for those who don't follow Nick Kicks on social media at Perform, he posts a lot of off-season videos with Tua. And some of the things they were working on was Tua's footwork, keeping his eyes downfield, so feet always moving, but also that spin move, both left and right. And, you know, it's working. The, the gains Tua has made in the off-season, not just in the building with Mike McDaniel and stuff like that, but outside of the building, you know, with um, Nick Hicks and other trainers and stuff like that, had to be commended. Um, it's two was, two was night and day. And for everyone saying, oh, two was just spend the off season in cold weather, like it's going to be sharp, man. Like, two was show you can play in cold weather games. Shout out to Perform. Shout out to Nick Hicks. Um, yeah, I, bro, I never, cold weather quarterback, bro, I never bought into that. Now, if you look at the teams he played on when he played in those cold weather games, what would make you think he would perform better in those games than he did in the other games of those seasons with said cast, supporting cast? That's all I'm saying. So now he has an actual supporting cast, so he's actually going to perform better in cold weather. I think that's simple math, but some people don't. Listen, we're going to get into the uh, bonus time, and the perfect segue I can make for bonus time is I'm done having the cold weather conversation around Tua. And I'm done having the he can't throw the deep ball conversation around Tua. I'm done with having the whatever other conversation that were that were conversations that were foolish around Tua. The same way I'm done with who's better, Ronaldo or Messi. I'm done with that conversation too. Y'all don't even don't even come over here with that. But listen, y'all know what time it is. Stay positive, test negative. For Kadeem Simmons, I'm Charlie Touche. Thank you for tuning in this time. Make sure you catch us next time on Go Time.
already. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. And it's your time. Going all out when it's go time. Go, go. I ain't wasting no time. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. Cause it's your time. Lay it on the line when it's go time. Go, go. Don't waste no time. Gotta make them lose their mind when it's your time. And it's your time. So before we get started, Kadeem, are you going to say something? Well, I would say before we get started, shout out to the Motor City Detroit Lions who beat the Jets. Dan Campbell will continue to Dan Campbell. The Jets are still one game behind the Dolphins. And for anyone keeping track of the Dolphins' playoff chances, I think after the loss, the playoff odds dropped. However, the Dolphins essentially if the Dolphins beat the Jets and the Patriots, they're in, regardless of the result against Green Bay. Miami could lose to Green Bay, beat um the Patriots, beat the Jets, they're in the playoffs. If the Jets want to keep on losing, if other AFC teams want to keep on losing, like the Titans are probably playoff bound, but I believe Ryan Tannehill picked up an injury. I don't know if he's returned yet. But listen, the Dolphins need to win. The last two games to guarantee a playoff spot. Let's just go in our next three. What you was gonna say? No, yeah, I think, of course, I don't want to downplay how significant uh, a buy is if you win the one seat. Yes, we wanted to get a buy. Yes, we wanted to win the division so we can have a home game. And m- most likely, if you won the division, you were probably the two seed in the AFC. So you may have two home games yeah we wanted that now my thing is i'm not afraid of cincinnati bro and i'm not afraid to go to cincinnati either it's like the same people with the narrative of oh katie playing the cold weather i don't know i can't trust Tua. like that's why y'all afraid of the go to cincinnati and play in the cold like because you you doubt your quarterback i know who i have at quarterback i'm comfortable with this team and the quarterback and the coach we're gonna we're gonna smack cincinnati If we go to Cincinnati first round, we will smack Tennessee. If we go to Tennessee the first round and I don't even think Baltimore is going to be there, but we will beat them too. I'm okay with, with, with going on the road in the playoffs. I don't want to, but I still think we're going to go to at least like I predicted earlier this season, we're going to win the, the, a playoff game. That's not the goal though. The goal is not winning a playoff game. The goal is to win the Super Bowl. So I, I do think we're going to make a lot of noise in this playoffs. I don't see a team in the first round of the playoffs that we're going to have an issue with. Now, I also think it's a bad matchup for Kansas City if we play Kansas City at Kansas City because people still sleep on us, ironically enough. That's not what I want to talk about here in this bonus time because we have all week to talk about that. Kadeem, I have a confession. Y'all know I don't like kickers or punters. All right. I don't. Like, yo, listen. I don't even think they're they should be allowed to have numbers. I think the kickers should wear a K. And I think punters should wear a P on their jersey. Don't give them a number. You're taking you're taking a pretty dope number away from a position player. So you should have a K on your chest or a P on your chest. I ain't even lying to you. I, I believe that. And I, that's not even a joke. But my thing is, Kadeem. In the world we live in now with the climate of player safety, the NFL has tried to make changes into making the game safe, right? More safe. And they kind of removed the kickoff. Basically, you, you kick it in the end zone, you get the ball at the 20. Then they changed that rule to where you get it at the 25. I got you, Kadeem. So now you get it at the 25, right? So it's like you and now you change the onside kick to where you're probably not chances of you getting the onside kick is like hitting the lotto. It still happens, but whatever. I got I got a solution, Kadeem, for kickers. And this is how we do this. How can we keep kickers in the game and make them relevant? What they what the NFL did was they moved back the extra point. Oh, move back the extra point will make it make it more difficult a little bit harder, and it's not just chip shots. I love that idea. I thought they should back it up a little bit further than that. 
to make it an actual thing. Like, nah, bro, you got to actually make a real kick to, to get this extra point. But where it's at now is already doing enough um, damage. I ain't gonna lie, Kadeem. I got an idea for overtime rules. In the spirit of the World Cup and PKs, and I know you're gonna. <laughs> Kadeem, in the spirit of penalty kicks, and, and and if you play if you play extra time in the World Cup, which is overtime in the NFL, it's an extra period, right? Kind of, we'll say. And after that extra period, they go to penalty kicks my dog from across the pond calls them penalties i call them pks because they're penalty kicks or we i think i think we call them pks over here i ain't gonna lie to you g cool philly goes fgs no we don't get in you best call my penalties penalties so i shot mr man i was was saying fgs over here but you say penalties though but we don't call them fields we don't call them field fields they're called field goals they're penalty kicks i'm just saying all right. Yeah, back, yeah, back the NFL, you throw the ball. Like, All right, here we go. All right, here nor there, but here we go, Kadeem. You know what I think the overtime rule should be? This, I, I really, I, I really believe this. You're gonna say what, golden goal, aren't you? Nah, 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 nah not golden goal. Here, here, here's what I think. I think the NFL should play a, a period of overtime. Cool, we could keep it the same. I'm not thrilled with the if you score first, you don't get the ball or if you score a field goal, then the other teams can score, score. If they score a touchdown, I'm not really thrilled about that part. But I don't like ties. I hate ties with a passion. So in order to keep the game safe and not play too much football is what they're, they're chalking it up to. We got to keep it safe. We don't want extra plays, but we want extra games. I don't know how that makes sense, but we'll go there. I think after overtime, if the game is still tied – we go to kickers and we match kicks. Like, yo, you start from the 25 and we just keep backing it up. This kicker makes makes it from 35 yards out. Next kicker has to make it from 35 yards out. If you match, we back them up seven yards at a time, 10 yards at a time until, until someone blows it. Then that is, that is in essence like the tiebreaker. I love it. I love that idea, bro. In the spirit of the World Cup. Yeah, it's it, it's fun. A kickoff. That's a real take... kickoff. It's a kickoff. But then at that point, you're taking the ball out. Like, ain't no one trying to see two dusty kickers. Like, oh no. But I'm saying you just had a whole period, Kadeem. You had a whole overtime period to win the game, and you still ended up tied. So you have four quarters. You have four quarters to win this game. You didn't do it. You tied. You had an extra overtime period. You didn't do it. You tied. Let's go to the kickoff, bro. Like, let's make these kickers earn their money. They get millions of dollars, bro. Let's go to the kickers. This is this is an American thing because as as an English person, ties or draws, as we call them, mm-hmm. they are a common thing in especially soccer. Um. So very quickly, I'm watching for some reason Cardinals Broncos. This mm-hmm. game is hideous. Bro, I, I, I don't bring that hideous hideous game on this dope podcast, man. Like, um, I don't want nothing to do with that hideous game. Oh, do you know what wasn't hideous? What was that? The World Cup final, which was <sighs> the best World Cup final I have ever seen. I was neutral. I honestly just wanted to see a good game of football. Would have been great if Messi won because he gets that World Cup. If, if Mbappe goes back to back, and let's be honest, Mbappe scoring a hat trick in a World Cup, World Cup final. And still losing, if I'm Mbappe, I'm saying to the rest of the France squad, don't talk to me. Because <laughs> I dragged us to, to penalties. I dragged us kicking and screaming. And all you had to do from 12 yards out <laughs> is hit the target. Big man. Like, as, as, a, as a soccer person, if you take a penalty... And the keeper doesn't even save it. You're walking home. Can I don't answer? care where we are. You're walking home. Hit the target. <laughs> Good that's, that's the equivalent, yeah, of a extra point, and you miss extra point. Big man, you're not getting on the plane home. 
you are getting cut immediately. Don't bother coming back to the facility. We won't even mail your stuff home. It's going in the trash because you are trash. <laughs> End of. <laughs> How are you not hitting target, big man? Are you done? <laughs> you have one job, 12 yards out. You see that big white thing? It's called a goal. Hit. Oh, God. It's stupid. Good thing, bro. Listen. You don't know how many every four years, bro, on everything. I I I, I am a self-proclaimed, I admit I'm a casual when it comes to soccer. I only watch the World Cup. That is it. I, I admit it. And then when you know the the if it's a championship game of, of what's I don't even know the name of the cup. It's it's, it's is it Copa America? Copa, yeah, so so it's the it's a Euro Cup. So it's, it's it's a continent equivalent. So right. South America had the Copa America, right? And then there's a Euro Cup, yeah, European, right, Cup, right. Um, yeah, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I wa I watch championship games. They call me Championship Chuck. You feel me? I just watch championship games because I kind of feel like Kadeem when I'm watching the league games or or all these other leagues. I'm like, bro, these boys ain't even playing for real. You know, it, it feels like that to me. Like, yo, they get paid all this money and they going half half speed. I don't I don't appreciate it. But World Cup come around? Can we call them tournaments, not championships? Like they're not championships, they're tournaments. Okay. All right, Kadeem. You are and, resident, and you are resident football guy. I, I'll give it to you. Listen, end of the end of the day, Kadeem. Every four years, I'm locked in. This was the first time in who knows how long that I couldn't watch every single game because I actually have things I have to do now in my life. Mike McDaniel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so listen, Kadeem, bro. This game was, I, and what I said was the passing of the torch to Mbappe. Messi was going to win and be the greatest ever, or he was going to lose to Mbappe, and Mbappe was going to, like, yo, I'm here now. And I ain't going to lie to you, Kadeem. I'm putting, I, I, very, I really, 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 really dislike France national team. I, I really dislike them. But I'm putting my money on France national team until otherwise, like, Every World Cup for now on the next eight years is going on France, bro. But here, let's talk about today, bro. Are you serious, dog? Two, you you went up two nothing, bro. Two nil. If I was from England, y'all went up two zip, bro. And Mbappe comes back, scores two goals, right? They they done it against Netherlands, though. They done the I, exact same thing bro, against Netherlands. It's the it's the it's the final though, Kadeem. <laughs> this can't happen in the final, bro. This can't happen in the final. So you come back, and then the GOAT that Messi is, bro, puts him up again in, in extra time. 3-2. And then the, the, the baby GOAT that, that Mbappe is. Nah, bro. I'm not going out without a fight. Now, I'm going to be real, Kadeem. Mbappe ain't show up in the first, in the first, half, in the first half of the game, bro. He, did, he was first a no-show. First show up in, half. He didn't show up until that penalty in the second half. He was silent. <laughs> He was silent. But that's also, but he still showed up in the second half. But I'm saying, like, bro, the man didn't show it like, yo, is this your king? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I was like, damn, bro, where is it? I thought we was, I thought we was gonna have the Mbappe Messi. You know what I'm saying? And then Mbappe was like, nah, I'm gonna let Messi shine. You know what I'm saying? I respect to the GOAT. You know, so I'm gonna let him shine for a little bit, and then Mbappe showed up, got a hat trick on them boys. What what did you make of the game today, Kadim? It was so many narratives and yeah, listen, it would have been cool for France to go back to back, back, back to back, back to back, and Mbappe to win two World Cups before he's even 23. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, the manner in which like England got knocked out to France because Harry Kane couldn't score two penalties in one game. Mm -hmm. And Mbappe said, Big man, this is easy, this is light work. Not only am I gonna score two penalties in one game, I'm going to score three. Mm -hmm. I'm going to score Same three side. penalties. Same side. Messi scored two penalties. And, yeah, it's... The whole Ronaldo and Mbappe, Mbappe... Ronaldo, Messi debate, it's... It's never going to go away. It's over. What you talking about? It's going away no, today. No, no, but it's like, genuinely, hardcore Ronaldo fans will say the World Cup doesn't matter because Ronaldo scored... 
23 goals in England last year in a bad Man United team while Messi was playing for on PSG and done nothing. Not, not and a World Cup, don't matter. Listen, it's for for Messi. I obviously I think he cares about you know being going down as the greatest of all time, but for him, it's it's to emulate Maradona to bring the World Cup back mm-hmm. to Argentina, like what Maradona done. It's one of those things where since Maradona, Argentina have had so have had so many who's the next Maradona from Pablo Ayamar to Raquel May to like so many that I even forget. And Messi was the one that was like, I've got this. Like, you know, Maradona's passing. Messi was like, I'm good. I've won every single cup competition, every single cup I've ever played in now. If I enter that, that tournament, I have got the cup at home. It's mine. So, listen, shout out to Messi. I'm sure Mbappe... Well, I, I genuinely... You know what? I can't say I'm sure Mbappe gets the final again because the one thing about this France team is not that it needs to be rebuilt, but the captain, Hugo Lloris, is old. Um, Rafael Varane, the centre-back, he's getting on in years. It's a very young team. The team that finished and took the penalties are full of youngsters. But I do think that the you know that youth probably cost them today because Argentina's penalties were like Paolo, Pablo, yeah, Paolo de Barla, who's you know like around thirty. They they they, they could they call them their veterans, which France couldn't do. And you you never know how tournament football is gonna you know develop over the next four to eight to twelve years. But you would like to think France gets another final before Mbappe retires. I ain't gonna lie, Kadeem. Mbappe is going to get the cup in four years. So there was he might have went four straight, three straight because he's going to be twenty seven. In four years, right? Yeah. And yeah, 31 ain't ain't like you grits. Messi's 35 right now. Yeah, all I will say is don't sleep on teams like Brazil. Like I, no, 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 no. I'm I'm being real. I'm being real. I'm like realistically, it's not likely that that this man runs two in a row now. You know what I'm saying? It's not likely that Mbappe goes next four years and then eight years later he gets another. It's not likely. But if he would have got this one, bro, this is also Michael Jordan stuff. If we talking about basketball, like, bro, the man won three in a row, took a break and came back and won three more in a row. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's on some, it's a different precedent. Now, what I like about the situation, if you can see the jersey I'm wearing, Messi steals one. Well, he didn't steal one. It's, it's, he gets his. And now Mbappe wins two in a row again. Like, two now, or not again, but two more now. He wins three out of four, bro. And it's like, yo, how good was really Messi? Because Messi came and interrupted the, the four straight that Mbappe could have had. But I'm 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 the casual, you know what I'm saying? I'm 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 also the, the resident better of the podcast. I'm putting my money on France. I'm just saying. And that being said, bro, this is why I watched the World Cup, bro. Like, and someone tweeted it so elegantly, bro. He said, This is why I only watched the World Cup. Because if soccer was really like this. I would lose years off my life. Ain't no way, bro. I could I could put up with that type of stress in every soccer game, bro. Ain't no way. Dude, I'm telling you now, yeah. Those Sundays or those weekends when Man United and the Miami Dolphins lose, <laughs> it's, it's brutal. And I'm sure, you know, Miami fans are like, oh, no, the, the weeks where the Panthers and the Marlins and the Heat and the Dolphins lose, like it's all nah. I'm saying is, like, no, nah, it's not. It's not like that. It's not as bad as you think. It's it's because we're spoiled too. It's because yeah. where we have an embarrassment of riches in in the sunshine state, and we have all these teams, and it's kind of diluted, honestly. So we don't really appreciate something like a World Cup every. You only get it four years at a time, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like some of these countries don't have nothing. You know what I'm saying? And then they have soccer. You know what I'm saying? No. You know they want to make the World Cup every two years. How you feel about that? Don't don't do it. Like because because again it's like two years. Like the, the the magic of the World Cup is every four years. I get it. I and get it, you bro. have like the Euros in between, so mm-hmm. it's like the Euros are like the little tune up before the World Cup. 
So for me, yeah. it came out four years. So here, here's my thing. As a casual, I'm all for it because I'm a casual. I, I, I need more of this in my life. You know what I'm saying? But I don't want to hang around for all the in-between. So as a casual, I understand why they, they'll do that. But at the same time, I, I, as a, a like just knowing what it means, I, I don't think you should do it. Cause I, I like tradition, you know what I'm saying? So. Uh,